All right, who's ready for the word of the Lord? Let me hear you now. Come on now. Oh, come on. You can do much better than that. Come on, brother. Listen, you should be just as excited for the word, even more excited for the word than you are the worship. It, it transforms my life. Worship makes me feel good. Worship, worship, come on now. Worship will open my heart up to receive the word, but the word will bring life change when it's applied to my life. The word will bring fruit in my life. So one more time, who's ready for the word? Come on now. There you go. We're kicking off a new series today called Jesus Use Me. Jesus Use Me. I believe more than ever that Jesus wants to use you. He wants to use me. Listen, we should not be surprised today by all the chaos happening around us. I know it's been a shocking few weeks, and uh, last week especially. A lot of things happening in our government. A lot of things happening in our world. A lot of things happening in our backyard. But we shouldn't be surprised. I want to declare something to you today that we should never be surprised when people act like they've forsaken God. We should never be surprised when people turn their back on God. We should never be surprised when chaos hits. Let me tell you, God is not surprised and God is not shocked. God is not shocked. God is not surprised. He has placed you and I, he has placed us here during this season for a purpose. You are not here by accident. You are not here without a purpose. God has a purpose. If you are born during this time, God has placed you here during this time. God has destined that you walk through this season. God has got you here for a reason. And the reason is this. You can handle it. I can't, I can't handle it. Yes, you can. What part of the Bible says you can't handle it? As God's children, we can handle anything. And God has you here during this time. You are destined to walk during this time, to live during this time. And so you might as well thrive. You might as well walk as a light shining bright for God. You might as well walk and say, God, I, I can handle it. I, I don't like it. I may not agree with it. But God, you've got a reason. What is that reason? The reason is this. God wants to use you. You're here for a purpose. God has given us everything we need to not be afraid and to be victorious. But what happens, what happens if the new government raises my taxes and, and all this goes up? Listen, it's going to change from season to season. From, from different control of one house, things are going to change. But let me tell you, what doesn't change is God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And who is your trust in? Is your trust in a political kingdom or a spiritual kingdom? Come on now, let me ask you again. Where is your trust? Some of you act like all your trust is in a political kingdom. No, my trust first starts in a spiritual kingdom that, God, you are in control. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for the bread. Come on now. I'm telling you today, our faith has got to be, all right, God. You've embraced me. God, you have destined me, and you wanted to use me during this season now more than ever. God wants to use you to bring change to somebody's life. God wants to use you to be the person who brings. What are you going to do tomorrow when you head to work? Are you going to walk in with everybody else saying, boy, it's just going to keep going down and get bad. It's going to keep getting worse. I don't know what's going to happen. Boy, we're in trouble now. Are you going to come in and be like, you know what? Yeah, it's crazy. But you know what? I'm, at, I'm all right. I'm at peace because God's in control. Who are you going to speak to? Let me say this to you today. God wants to use you during this time. Write that down if you haven't. God wants to use you during this time. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. He's destined for us to be here. Our world needs Jesus. I love the song we just sang, sang about lift him high. I'm like, yes, God, you alone are lifted high. God, my, my faith is in you alone. My hope is in you alone. God wants to use you. Government is not our answer. 
I don't care who's in charge of the White House. Government is never our answer. Jesus is always our answer. And you got to be secure in that. You got to be have faith in that, that Jesus is still the answer for the world today. Jesus is still in charge today. So many people are mixed up about God. I mean, we got people, they got, they're all mixed. We got pastors standing up and declaring different God's names. And they're getting up and say, amen, and a woman, having no idea about what they're saying. They have no idea about the blasphemy they're bringing. Listen, people are messed up outside of church, and people are messed up inside of church. And it's time for the true church to rise. We got to rise up now. Come on. We, we, more than ever, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to step forward. We have an opportunity to shine bright. We have an opportunity to let God's love pour out of us. We have an opportunity to be peacemakers. We have an opportunity to go after the things of God. The world is watching us. What are they seeing? Now, I'm going to read some scripture today, and I want you to, to get with me, all right? Are you ready? I want you to get this. We're going to read a couple of long passages here, but I believe it's important. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. See if this doesn't ring true to us, okay? But be aware, mark this, okay? Pay attention. There will be terrible times in the last days. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be shocked. And when you go back and study this word last days, its original meaning means, the, sometimes the words last days in the Bible have different meanings, and this one means the last of the last. Okay? This, this, original, this meaning means the last of the last days. So this is what's going to happen. He goes, don't be shocked. Terrible times are going to our head. <laughs> Look what it says. People will be lovers of themselves. That's not happening, is it? Come on now. How many selfies you take this week? Come on. How many people value themselves off of how many likes they get on their Instagram posts, okay? It's, it's, it's taking over, okay? Self-love. We're worried. What is everybody thinking about us? I'm loving of myself. I, my, I'm loving and loving myself. How about lovers of money? Is that happening? Every day. Yeah. Boastful. Oh, yeah. Proud. Oh, yeah. Abusive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Check, 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 check. How about this one? Disobedient to the parents. That's not a problem, is it? Okay. <laughs> How about ungrateful? Unholy, check, check, check. Without love, come on now, looking for love in all the wrong places. Don't have any love to give. No one loves me. How many times have we hit? No one loves me. No one loves me. No one loves me. I don't have any love to give. That's becoming more and more common. Unforgiving. Do we live in a society that's unforgiving? Yeah. How about this? Uh, Slanderous. I mean, we don't like what's going on. We just slander the other person, right? We don't like the other side. We slander the other side. Without self-control. Check, check, check. Brutal. Check. And not lovers of the good. Check, check, check. It says they will betray their friends be reckless, check, check, <laughs> conceited, check, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, check, having a form of godliness but denying its power, it's moved into the church, people, I'm telling you, check, having nothing to do, he goes, have nothing to do with such people. We should not be surprised that chaos is erupting. Because Jesus told us, the Bible tells us, Paul warned us that in the last days, 
these are the seasons we're going to walk in. So we shouldn't be shocked. I can't believe, we'll be, believe people are turning their back on God. Believe it. It's going to happen. And so God is not shocked. Okay, God is not surprised. He warned us several years ago, several decades ago, several centuries ago. We were warned that this is what would happen as we near the last of the last days. That's why we spent four weeks talking about this in our, our series before we did transformation. We talked about the last days. We brought in a special speaker, had a special Sunday. I spoke several messages on it. Why? Because we are walking in what the Bible is calling the last of the last days. And so we should not be surprised. But what should happen is my behavior should be modified to realize, all right, I need to lift my head up. I need to look unto the Lord. I need to look, make sure my house is in order. I need to make sure my children are ready to meet Jesus. I need to make sure my family's ready to meet Jesus. I need to make sure my friends are ready to meet Jesus. I need to go all out. I need to go all out. I got to quit being self-consumed and let God's light shine on me brighter than ever. Because as darkness feels around us, you have an opportunity and responsibility to shine out, to be bright, to let God's love shine through you. Look at 2 Timothy 4.1. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. He challenges us. Say, just the next, next letter over, the next chapter over. We did 2 Timothy 3, now 4. He goes, I want you to preach the word. Preach the word. We got, we got to make sure we're staying connected to the word. Listen, if I ever don't preach the word, you have permission to come up and spiritually slap me. I'm telling you right now. I, you should always preach the word. Everything's connected to the Word. The Word is the only thing that remains. This is the only thing that does not change. He says, preach the Word. Be prepared in season and out of season. So he's telling you this. Be prepared when your party wins and when your party loses. Be prepared when chaos erupts and when things are going great. Be prepared when things get crazy. Be prepared because you are charged with preaching the word and being ready in season and out of season. Come on now. I'm about to step all over somebody's toes today because it's the word. It's the word of the Lord. and It is time for the church to rise up. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Look what he says now. He goes, I want you to correct, rebuke, and encourage. Now, the church, we're really good about encouraging people. But you start correcting people, rebuking people, and all of a sudden the church empties. Everybody goes, I'm gone. I go somewhere where they want to encourage me, you know. And you got, you got to have balance. And people who grow and people who are going to be light and people who are going to change are people who love correction. People who embrace correction. People who will embrace rebuke. You're right, Pastor. I do need to change some things. You're right. I do need to change some things about my life. You're right. I do. People who love the Lord will love his correction. You see, if you have a hard time with the correction of the Lord, then you need to recheck your heart. Because correction, correction will bring the change. And we've got to make sure, now than ever, we cannot water down the gospel to make people feel good. we got to preach the word in season and out of season. And so it's got to be correction. It's got to be rebuke at times. And it's also encouraging. But with what? With great patience and careful instruction. So you know, all right, I, I, with patience and with love, I'm correcting you because God wants better for your life. Not because we're trying to live any way or, or trying to bring you a bunch of religious do's and don'ts, but no. Correction will bring blessing in the season of hardship 
Correction will bring blessing in the season of chaos and you will thrive when others are diving. You will thrive because you embrace the word of the Lord. You embrace the correction of the Lord. Even sometimes you'll embrace the rebuke of the Lord. If you embrace it, I'm telling you, you'll set yourself up. You'll set your family and your children up to thrive and walk in blessing when others are failing. You'll stand out. You'll be a light. God will use you. How many want God to use you this year? Say, yeah, I want God to increase and use me in my life. I want God to use me this year. Come on, raise your hand. Is that you? If you didn't raise your hand right now, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we'll say that rebuke for later, okay? But in order for God to use me, I've got to be open to correction. I got to be open. Listen, as a pastor, I can't be so afraid that if I don't encourage you and I, re- and I correct you, that you're going to leave. No, that, that I'm not doing right and you're not doing right. We've got to both be, I, I can't be afraid to correct and you can't be afraid to take the correction. Don't, don't you love it when your children take correction? I know when my kids don't take correction, I'm like, Lord, help me. Jesus right now. Lord, I, oh God. These children you gave me, you know, God help me right now. But when they, when you correct them and they come to you later the next day or maybe a few days later, maybe even that same day, dad, I, I'm really sorry. I, I know you're, you're, you're correcting me because I need it and you're trying, you want what's best for me. All of a sudden we're like, that's right, son. That's right, daughter. And they walk out and you're like, yes, God, Hallelujah. You know, we, we, we embrace it because we see something happen. What's it called? It's the M word. Maturity. We see them maturing when they embrace the correction. When they, they do not like it, but they understand it's for the betterment of their life. I'm like, oh, the light's coming on. See, so as, even as Christians, we got to embrace it. God, correct me. Listen, I need corrected. I can tell you that. I need corrected. I get corrected a lot often. I'm in the fishbowl. I get corrected all the time. You should do the same. You should be open to correction in your life. Why? Because it allows God to use me. If you don't know this, God expects you to grow. God expects you to grow. Look what it says. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Are you kidding me? It's like the Bible knew the day we were walking in today. He does. And that's why he told us, don't be shocked when these things happen. Time's going to come when people don't put up a sound doctrine. we got people blaspheming, people who claim to be pastors and ministers, blaspheming the Lord on national TV. They don't have any idea about sound doctrine. Nothing. They're people pleasers. We can't be that way, guys. we got to be sound in our doctrine. Listen, you got to be sound in your doctrine. Instead, they suit to their own desires. They will gather around them a great number of teachers who say what their itching ears want to hear. Is that happening? Yeah, okay. Look what happens. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Then he warns us, all right, listen, us, the church, but you... Okay, we can't do that. We can't harden our heart to, re- to correction, to sound doctrine. He said, you can't do that. But you keep your head in all situations. What's my response? I'm going to keep my head in all situations. I'm going to stay sound in my doctrine. I'm going to stay sound in the word of the Lord. I'm going to be open to the rebuke and correction of the Lord. I'm going to be open to the encouragement of the Lord. Keep your mind and head in all situations. Listen, don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. You're going to be persecuted. When you take a stand for the Lord, you're going to be persecuted. People are going to mock you. People are going to say things about you. That's outdated. That's no longer relevant. They're going to keep pushing you. And and pretty soon the majority is going to become the minority. But that's okay. He said, for you, keep your head in all situations. Don't be afraid of the suffering of the Lord. Work at telling others the good news. So what do I do? What's my response? 
Keep my head in all situations. Be teachable. Be correctable. Get sound in my doctrine. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news. There it is. Jesus, use me because I am in charge of telling others the good news. This is my responsibility. This is why you are saved, redeemed for this season because he expects you and I, my life, to shout out, to live out, to be an example of the good news and to fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Listen today, we got to make sure that we are ready to be the church. We can't come to church on Sunday, sing our favorite song, lift our hands, say amen, and live out and go out tomorrow and live like the devil all week long. I've got to grow. I've got to be rebuked and corrected and say, yes, I've got to make some changes in my life. I've got to stand in, on sound doctrine of who Jesus is and who he says I am. That there is only one way to the kingdom of God. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. There is no other God before him. I don't know. We've got to be inclusive. No, you don't. There's only one God. There's only one way. I don't have to, I don't have to show disrespect to somebody else if they choose to believe a different way. But you know what? As for me and my house, there's one way. There's one God. Someone needs to say amen a little louder about that. We got to have sound doctrine. God expects me to grow. God expects me to be transformed. That's why we ended up the year last year, long series on transformation. God expects us to grow. God expects us to transform. He expects us to be a light in the darkness. If it's getting darker, then he wants you to be brighter. Listen to me. Every single one of us is a preacher. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Did you know you was a preacher? You're a preacher today. I thought you was the preacher. No, I'm the pastor. you you, you. You're a preacher. Every one of our lives is preaching something every single day. I didn't know. I, yeah, your, your, your life is preaching something every day. Do you fully trust the Lord? Or are you going to panic? Are you going to keep your head in every situation? Are you going to look to the Lord? What's your life preaching? Tomorrow when you go to work and everybody's talking, your life's going to preach a message. Amen. Do you, are you really trusting the Lord? God expects us to grow. He expects us to be light. Our life is preaching every day. You should be a sermon at your work. You should be a sermon at the store. You should be a sermon at your school. You should be a sermon in your neighborhood. Your life should be a sermon. And the greatest sermon ever preached was not found in a pulpit, but found in everyday lives of people who are trusting and living out Jesus. People are watching you. People are, are watching you. you. You say you trust Jesus, but your actions say a whole different story. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's really preaching today. We're not called, listen to me, we are not called to blend in, but to stand out. We are not called to blend in, but to stand out. It's time for the church to stand out. It's time for us to go. Look what Genesis 47 says. Verse 27 of verse, uh, chapter 47. Now the Israelites settled. Hang on a second. Realizing during this time, there was a great famine, okay? There was a great famine in the land. Economies busted. People are not eating. People are barely getting by. Everybody's panicking. But look what it says in verse 27. Now the Israelites settled in Egypt, the region of Goshen, and they acquired the property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. Time out. 
Are you telling me when everybody else is selling off, when everybody else is being foreclosed, when everybody else is starving, God's people who lived in the region of Goshen, what, they acquired property there, and they were fruitful, and they increased greatly in number. Why? Because they're God's people. The children of God are going to be taken care of. You may be walking through a famine, but God is going to take care of you when you put your trust in him, when you allow him to correct you. They had to come and be corrected. They had to come and humble themselves. But God used them and God protected them and God increased greatly. Everybody say that word to get Goshen together. Remember that. It's an important part. Listen, God wants us to refuse to live in fear. When everybody else is panicking, he wants you to shine bright. The only way to do this, you must know who you are in Christ, that God will take care of his children. Now, remember that word. Now, let's go to Exodus 8, verses 21 and 23. Remember what Moses said to Pharaoh, if you do not let my people go, because I'm going to send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses, and the houses of the, I mean, God was bringing his wrath down. And we know it wasn't just flies. He brought all those different plagues. They kept bringing them and bringing them. He was, the wrath of God was coming in the land. Even the ground will be covered with them. But look at this. But on that day, he goes, I will deal differently with the land of who? Why are you kidding me? During the famine, God's people are multiplying, increasing, being taken care of. During the plagues and judgment of God, what happened? I will deal differently with my people. Where my people live, no swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that I am the Lord and I am in this land. He goes, I will make a distinction. You should be distinct. I will make a distinction between my people and your people and this will be a sign. The sign will occur. Listen, God will make a distinction between his people and the people who are not with him. You don't have to, listen, you don't have to make a distinction for yourself. God will make that distinction. You just stay true. You stay whole to who he is. You should be distinct. People should look at you and say, that person's true to their faith. That person's trusting God no matter what. That person is showing God's love no matter what. That person's keeping their head up no matter what. There's a distinction. I want you to be full of faith. Listen, when God brought judgment, God, God provided the ark for Noah and his family. God took Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah before this happened. I'm telling you, God is going to take care of the righteous. God is going to take care of you. There may be, listen, don't be, don't be shocked if tough days hit us. Don't be shocked if economies collapse. Don't be shocked if things begin to happen. Don't be shocked if things happen. He says, it's okay. Keep your head. Keep your eyes holding to sound doctrine. Hold on to the truth. It's the last of the last days. Listen, we cannot be like everybody else. We cannot be like everybody else. Living in fear. Walking and responding out of fear. We should embrace spiritual maturity. Many of us were called to be the light of the world, but let's be honest. Many of us are more like a nightlight. I mean, we got the light. We got Jesus. Jesus is in us. And we're shining. I'm a Christian. But truth be known, we're more like a nightlight, right? What is a nightlight purpose? It's, the purpose is to simply to help you when you, either when you wake up or the power goes out. Your eyes, first of all, your eyes aren't hurting. It really allows you to see just enough to get around and to keep you comfortable. Ooh, he preaching to me today. Come on now. How many of us, we, our level of light is really about being comfortable? Well, I'm comfortable just this much light showing out of my life. Uh, it's just, just enough. I, I go to church on Sunday, and, you know, I've even got a Destiny t-shirt I wear on some days a week now. I, I, I even post a scripture at least once a month on my Facebook account. I, I, I let my light shine. It's comfortable. Listen. No, no, this is not the, let me tell you, this is not the season for nightlights. 
This is not the season. Come on, I'll preach to this side today. This is not the season for nightlights. It's time for us to shine bright. It's time for us to stand out. It's time for us to stop being the nightlight. Look what it says here in Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. It gives light to everyone in the house in the same way. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. Listen, what does it mean? It means simply this. It's time to stop being a nightlight. God wants you to shine bright. God wants you to shine bright. It's your season. I'm keeping my head in every season. A tough season, good season. I'm keeping my head. I'm going to shine bright. It's my time to shine bright. It's time for me to increase my light. Ephesians 5, 8, the last thing I'm going to read as we close. For you once were full of darkness. And if I can add an amendment there, also, you, you graduated to a nightlight. But now, you have the light from the Lord. So live as people of the light. How many receive that correction today? How many receive that encouragement today? How many receive sound doctrine today? How many hold truth to the word of God today? How many say, I'm ready. I'm ready for God to use me during this season. This is my challenge. This is my goal, that Jesus, you would use me. Our magicians are coming, and we're going to close out with this course about giving our heart fully to Jesus. As you stand today, let me just tell you, next week, next week I'm going to be talking more about Convoy of Hope. We're going to be talking about our one day coming up on Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to let Jesus use us. And together, we're going to help feed a lot of children around the world. Do you realize today, because of your faithful giving last year on Super Bowl Sunday, that 160 kids are having a meal today, and they get it every day, at least once a day, because of what you did. 160 kids all year long were getting fed who would have been hungry because that you said, you know what? I'm going to be a light. I'm going to let Jesus use me. So next week, I'm going to share with you the goal we're going to set for us as a body. And we're going to come and we're going to talk about how we're going to make a difference in kids' lives. But this year, I believe that God wants to use us more than ever. God's going to use us to be his hands and feet. God's going to use us to do miracles. He's not going to use me by myself, but together, he's going to multiply what we give. And it's going to become a miracle in God's hands. How many raise your hands and say, Pastor, I want Jesus to use me today. Father, we pray this prayer. Use us. Use us, God. Use us, God. Help us to be people who embrace correction. Help us to embrace rebuke. Help us to re embrace encouragement. Help us to embrace sound doctrine. Help us to embrace the teaching of the word. May we keep our head in every season. May we respond differently than others around us. No, we're called to be light. And we say yes to that in Jesus' name. Come on, let's make us the prayer of our heart today. Let's give them our full heart.